I just got back from Amelia's and unlocked the door to my house and entered. After hanging my coat on the side rack, I went in the kitchen. I opened the fridge and took out cans of beer and the cold fried chicken that I ordered earlier. I started to think about Amelia while drinking cold beer. Amelia is my friend from the last seven years. When I first became her friend, she told me that she has been getting stalked, but she doesn't know who the stalker is. Let me tell you from the day we first became friends. I was sitting in a coffee shop enjoying the atmosphere and reading a book that I had recently bought from my favorite bookstore across the town. It was about self-love and how you can inspire others to love. It was a fascinating book. That was when she walked out of the bathroom and sat on the table behind me. She was with some of her friends. They were talking about work-related problems and how much they hate their boss to overwork them. I had just started to get focused on their conversation when the counterboy called, Order number 188 and 189, please receive your orders. My order was 189, so I got up and went ahead to pick it up. Two similar looking trays were sitting there on the counter as I was about to pick up my order. She came and picked it up while saying, I'm order number 188. She looked at me with her deep green eyes and took the tray while smiling, which by the way was my order. I could not help but stare. Her wavy silky black hair were bouncing on her back as if they were dancing on a rhythm. She was wearing a teal dress which was barely covering her knees. It was definitely her pear-shaped body. I grabbed the other tray and walked to my seat. I thought I should go and tell her that she had grabbed the wrong order, but I hesitated. That was when someone tapped me over my shoulder. I turned around, and it was her. Uh, sorry, I accidentally grabbed wrong order. Would you mind switching? She said with a smile. I looked at the tray she was holding, and there was a lipstick mark on the cup. She saw me looking at the mark and said, I actually took a sip without paying attention. I can change it if you want. But I'm not very fond of Americano, so you can give me my order back. She laughed nervously and looked at me with pleading intent. I nodded and exchanged the tray. I just took the cup without asking to change. She thanked me and went back to her table. When I was about to leave, she stopped me at the exit. Can I have your number? I swear, it's only so that I can pay you back for your Americano. I laughed at her nervousness and gave her my number. After about half an hour, I received a call from an unknown number. I picked it up and it was a soft voice of a girl. I immediately recognized it was her. Hi, it's Amelia. You gave me your number in the coffee shop. I have just called to let you know that it's my number. After saying that, she disconnected the call. I again received her call at night. She told me that she just wanted to thank for earlier and we talked for a while. For that day on, we started to talk on a regular basis and became friends. One day, when I was near the library in the evening, she called me. I think someone is following me. Can you please come over here? Her voice was trembling. I asked her where she is, and the address she told me was just two blocks away. Don't panic, I'm nearby, I'll be right there. I went there, and she was looking all freaked out. She noticed me, came running toward me, and hugged me. She started sobbing and talked at the same time. I was walking from here and felt like someone was following me. I couldn't see him, but I know someone was. I patted her back slowly and told her that everything will be fine. She told me that she lived nearby and asked me to walk her home. As we reached her house, she invited me in. I noticed that she lived in the same area as me, and when I told her that, she looked shocked. She asked me to feel at home and went to her kitchen. After a while, she came back holding a bottle of wine and two glasses. She sat at the chair next to mine, poured wine into the glasses, and gave one to me. As we were drinking wine, she started to cry. I asked her the reason for her crying. She told me that someone's been stalking her for the past few months. She told me that she never saw her stalker's face except for his plum jacket that has a picture of a snake over it. She also told me that the stalker sometimes sends her gifts along with letters. She showed them to me. There was a picture of her from a party in a sexy black sleeveless dress. There was a heart-shaped chocolate box, a dress, etc. Letters contained praise for her beauty. She embraced me and started to cry even more while telling me. 
I held her tightly in my arms, but she pulled away. She looked into my eyes, came closer, and kissed me. Can you make me forget about it? She said after kissing, and then again smashed her lips over mine. After making out for about an hour, she took me to her bedroom and started to undress me. We had sex the entire night. I told her she can call me for help whenever she needs help. We never got into an official relationship. We stayed friends with benefits. Whenever she felt like someone's following her or the stalker sends her gifts, she called me over. We would talk and then have sex. It's been seven years and the stalker's identity still hasn't revealed. I let her use me as she pleases because I am in love with her. While I was thinking all this, my beer was already finished. My phone started to ring and I knew it was her without even looking at it. I answered the call and her voice, she was panicked. I just received another gift from him. Can you please come over? I looked to the snake picture on my plum jacket that was hanging on the rack and said to Amelia, don't worry, I'll be right there. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. My name is Amelia Bennett. I have been getting stalked for the past seven years. The first time when I noticed about getting stalked, I told police about it, but they could find anything, and I thought that I'm imagining things. I was walking home from office when I first noticed someone following me. I turned around, and no one was there, so I ran to my house and locked the door from inside. Because I had no idea if he or she followed me to my home or not. By the next day, I forgot about it and when I was taking a shower, someone started ringing the doorbell. I thought if I don't open the door, they will leave, but the doorbell kept ringing. I immediately got out of the bathroom, dressed up, and went to open the door. It was still ringing. I opened the gate in frustration, but no one was there. Instead, there was a small package on my door. After picking it up, I locked the door again. I opened the package and there was a picture of me holding a beer and sitting on the bar counter. There was a note inside as well. I opened it and it said, You look hot as hell, my Amelia. I panicked. The incident from yesterday started to rewind itself in my mind. I immediately called 911 and reported it. They told me to calm down and they will look into it. For the next few days, there was no other package that I received. But wherever I went, I felt like someone's following me, and every time I turned around to check, I found no one. Few months passed, and the police couldn't find anyone. They told me that the gift must be from someone I know, and I may have gotten scared by my own imagination. No matter what I do, I couldn't help but think that he must be around me every time. I could never see the face of the stalked, but sometimes I saw a guy with a plum jacket with a picture of black snake over it. My friends started to worry about me and told me date. Their solution was you can get romance and protection at the same time, but I wasn't ready to date. I started receiving more packages and it all contained some dirty cheap lines. One time I received bra and the note said, your breasts would look amazing in this, my Amelia. His every letter contained the word, my Amelia, in them, and it was creepy. I was at work thinking about these things when my friend came looking all worried. They asked me if I'm okay. I told them about the situation, and their solution, as always, was to date. They dragged me to nearby coffee shop, and we started talking about office and made fun of our boss. I got distracted from the stalker for that period of time. That was when I took a sip of my coffee and noticed it wasn't my order. I remembered there was another guy whose order was with me. I had already taken a sip, so I thought I should let it be. But my friends forced me to go there, saying the boy is cute. I went there and apologized. Surprisingly, he exchanged the trays without even saying anything. I was talking with my friend when one of them pointed, look, that cute guy is leaving. You should totally exchange numbers. Go and say you want to pay for his Americano. 
I denied, but they practically forced me to. I went there and asked for his number hesitantly. He gave it to me and left. We went back to work. Before leaving, my friends reminded me to call him and I took their advice. I called him and let him know my number. I didn't know what else to say, so I disconnected the call. The following evening, I received another package with letter. I was distressed. That's when I thought of my friends telling me that a boyfriend can protect me. I dialed the number of that boy and started talking to him. His name was Daniel Park. He seemed nice, easygoing, so I started to like him. One day when I was leaving from the library, I noticed someone following me. I couldn't see him, but I was still terrified. I immediately called Daniel for help. He told me he was nearby, and I felt a bit relieved. When he came, I asked him to walk me home, and when we reached, I called him because I was still scared. I told him my story, and at the heat of the moment, I ended up having sex with him, and it felt as if I forgot about the stalker completely. After that, every time stalker made a move, I called Daniel over. But as time passed by, I started noticing things about Daniel which were similar to the stalker. One time, while we were having sex, he accidentally called me My Amelia. But after that, he never called me that, as if he was being careful about it. Another incident that I noticed recently was when I was talking to him about stalker. He jokingly said, what if he is just your secret admirer? I felt weird, but the thing that made me even more doubtful towards him was his handwriting, which was identical to the handwriting of the stalkers. Today, when I was in my garden, I noticed the stalker placing something outside my house. I hid and took a picture. When I zoomed in, I noticed the tattoo on the back of his palm. Daniel had the exact same tattoo. I called Daniel telling him about the stalker and asked him to come over. After that, I called 911 and told them about the picture of the stalker. Daniel was on his way to my house, and so was the police. To give some context, every summer I would do some temp work for the company where my dad worked. It was an education company, so they always needed temp workers around in July and August time for all of the exam remarks that they had come in. It was my data entry work, but it suited me fine. And that meant I could earn a little extra cash while I was at university. I did this every summer from when I was 19 through when I was 23. And then I got another job at the same company for a bit after I graduated, but we'll get to that later. For now, all you need to know is that I was a reasonably familiar face there and everybody knew I was my dad's daughter. The main downside of working there was that I'd clock off work at 5 p.m., but I'd have to wait for my dad to finish work since he was the head of an entire department, so he'd end up staying a bit later. Every day, I bring a book with me and sit in this little foyer area between his department and the department where I worked, since it had the most comfortable chairs. I must have been 22 years old when this happened, because it was the pen ultimate summer that I worked there. I had just had my hair cut short for the first time in my life, and I'd had it dyed red as well. I was sitting on these couches reading, when all of a sudden, this guy approaches me. Leon. Leon tells me that he works in my dad's department, and he thought he'd come introduce himself. This is a pretty common occurrence for me, and I was aware of this guy. He was young and decent looking, so a few of the women in my department had a crush on him. I was dating someone at the time though and I'd never actually seen him in person, but I could see what they saw in him. He got to chatting, and he mentioned that I changed my hair, so I told him about cutting it short, and he cut me off mid-sentence. As this is where it started to get weird. He said, no, first it was brown and you didn't have a fringe, and then you went through that phase of curling it, then you put the fringe in its indicted red, after that you dyed it purple, and now you had to cut short and data back to red. This guy I just met was describing over two years worth of hairstyle changes that I'd had. I felt creeped out, but it seemed like a nice enough guy, and I guess I'd worked at the company throughout the entire time, so it was reasonable to assume that he'd noticed me before, and that should have been the first red flag. He asked me if I had Facebook, and I told him that I did, so he said that he would add me. 
That seemed pretty normal. But then, after he'd sent the friend request, he asked me to get my phone out so he could watch me accept the friend request. I'm British, and it's therefore impossible for me to be impolite. So I got my phone out and showed him that I'd accepted it. I thought that might come and down. Bear in mind, he wasn't a bad looking guy, so I felt a bit flattered at this point that he was so keen on me. Then, sense of flattery dissolved real fast. After the Facebook thing, he kept asking me if I had MSN and I told him that I didn't. I swear throughout this conversation, he asked me if I had MSN about four times. Then the final time, he was like, please, can you get MSN Messenger so we can chat after work? It was like he had something really urgent he wanted to tell me, but I'd only just met this person. I kind of laughed and said how I hadn't used MSN since I was a teenager without necessarily rejecting him. Then he said something like, well, if you don't have MSN, then you have Skype. This seemed like the perfect opportunity to bring up my boyfriend who was a foreign student and went back to his home country during the summer. He was the only person I spoke to on Skype. I said to Leon how I didn't have my own Skype account, but I used my dad's Skype account to talk to my boyfriend. I really thought this might ward them off. I was wrong. Without missing a beat, he said, can you please just get your own Skype account so we can video chat after work? He said it like I somehow was inconveniencing him, like this was something we'd agreed to do months ago or something. I had no idea how to react, so I just sort of smiled and laughed. Thank the heavens someone from my dad's department walked past at the moment, was like, Leon, are you meant to be at your desk? He scurried off pretty quickly after that, but not before reminding me to get my own Skype account and sent him the details. I told my dad about the whole exchange in the car ride home, but all he said was that Leon was very friendly and that a lot of women in his department liked him. So maybe I just misunderstood the situation. I thought he was probably right, so I tried not to let it bother me. Later that evening, however, I was on my computer doing university work when a message popped up on my face. Look, it was Leon on the message. Said was, we like the same movies. I don't know what it was, but something about this message freaked me out so much. I decided not to respond and logged off Facebook, hoping that he would notice I had been online. The next day after work, I was sat in my usual spot when Leon comes over to me. His face was like thunder. At first, I thought he was having a bad day and was walking through the hallway but my heart dropped when I realized he was walking directly towards me. Why don't you respond to your Facebook message? I was stunned. How was I supposed to respond to that? Who says stuff like that in real life? Lucky for me, I didn't have an opportunity to respond because he started off on this tirade. I'm not even kidding. He started listing all of the movies we had in common, and then he had seen on my Facebook profile Batman, The Dark Knight, Watchmen, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Bike Club. I just sat there watching him reel off all of these film titles. Once he was finished, all he said was, It's okay, I forgive you, and then walked off back to his department. Over the next couple of weeks, he came and found me in my spot every day and talked to me, from the moment I sat down to the moment my dad came to get me. I don't remember many of the exchanges, but I do remember distinctly one day pretending to pick up my nose when I saw him coming to see if it would pull him off. It didn't. I got to the point where I'd get so stressed out after work that I'd go and hide in the toilets for as long as I could, but the women I worked with started to notice and think I was weird. Eventually, I broached the subject with my dad, and he gave me his car keys after my shift so I could go hide out in the car rather than the building. So I'm camping out in his car, and I'm still feeling quite tense. But after about 20 minutes, I start to feel at ease. Surely he won't come looking for me out here. Wrong. I looked over at the main entrance, and my heart drops. He is coming out of the door, and he's scrutinizing all the cars. I sank down as far as possible into my seat, but I wasn't fast enough, and he saw me. He comes rushing off and starts tapping the glass, so I open the door and ask him what's up. I didn't see you in your usual spot, but luckily the doorman told me he saw you come out here. Why are your dad's car? Again? What am you supposed to say to that? I told him I had a headache, 
so I had come out to the car to take some Persimmonitol and see if I could get some sleep. At least he respected that because he told me to feel better and left me alone. I breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that I was only going to be working there for a few more days before I had to go back to university. I told my dad about the car incident, and he gave Leon a talking to the next day. Leon would still come find me in the foyer, but he'd only talk to me for a few minutes and passing before leaving me alone, and there was a big relief. On my last day at work there, I was fully expecting him to do something crazy, but he didn't even come to chat with me that day. I left the office and thought that I would never see him again. I found out he was fired not long after I left the company that year because he kept coming into work late and then spent most of his time at work chatting with his co-workers and me apparently. Fast forward to January of 2014 and I was preparing to move to China for a position teaching English. I graduated from university and I was working at the same company, but this time in a semi-permanent capacity. It was my last day of work, so I received quite a few gifts and some fuss from my coworkers. It was about 10 a.m. when who should I see walk through the door but Leon. He had been hired as an attempt to do the job that I had done for so many years. As soon as he walked through the door, he saw me in this flash of recognition cross his face. I wanted to slide under my desk and die. It came walking over me and was all smiles, asking about how I was and why I was still doing at the company. I was at the point that one of my coworkers mentioned how I was off to China soon. Leon seized on that and started talking about his friend who was also interested in TFL. His interest seemed genuine, so I got to talk about how I got my TFL qualification who I got it through, what company I would be working with for on China, etc, etc. We chatted for about 20 minutes and he wrote down some details for his friend and went off to work. At the end of the day, I was packing all my stuff to leave and a few of my coworkers were coming over to say their goodbyes. Don't get me wrong, the Leon incident aside, I had a wonderful time working at that time. Company and I had made a lot of great friends out of the corner. My eyes see Leon approaching, but I think, what's the harm? He says goodbye and wishes me luck on my new adventure. Then, as I'm literally walking out the door of the department, I hear him call out, See you in China. For the first two weeks of my teacher training over there, I was like a hawk, keeping a constant lookout for this guy. He never did follow me out to China, but it still remains one of the creepiest encounters of my life.